Surveillance video shows the gunman driving through Truro, 40 kilometers east of Portapique, on the second day of the massacre. The town's chief of police says he didn't know the gunman was in his town until days later when he saw these pictures on the news. Citizens were upset. The uh, mayor was being emailed and, uh, of course, then they were reaching out to me to find out how did this happen, you know, why, why didn't you tell us this happened, and I had no idea it happened. McNeil was off duty. He testified his officers first found out something was happening when they got a call from the hospital in Truro that it was in lockdown. There had to be a lot of catastrophic failures for this guy to be on the loose for 13 hours driving through Nova Scotia doing what he was doing. The RCMP did later call Truro police to advise there was an active shooting and that the suspect was linked to a former police car that might be deckled. The Mounties also sent three be on the lookout bulletins to all police agencies in the province, but never asked them to help. I'm a firm believer in cooperation and we're not in competition, especially when it comes to the lives of uh, our citizens. McNeil testified his force's relationship with the RCMP has deteriorated, partly because of the Mounties' position on the alert ready system, which was not used to tell Nova Scotians about the mock police cruiser. All 10 Nova Scotia chiefs of police have since voted unanimously to change the RCMP's membership status in their provincial organization. The RCMP leadership, uh, you know, wanted the Nova Scotia chiefs to uh, endorse that the alert ready system doesn't work in the province. It's fundamentally doesn't work for police use. Um, Nova Scotia chiefs disagreed with that narrative. McNeil also testified he believes an alert should have been issued during the mass casualty and that it could have saved lives. Tomorrow, the Commission will hear more about the RCMP's communication with the public. Kayla Hounsel, CBC News, Halifax.